In recent years, the Tales series has found a special place in my heart, given that they make up some of the few JRPGs that I've actually completed. The series is well known for its gripping stories, lively and relatable characters, and action-based combat. Now, Tales of Crestoria is Bandai Namco's latest endeavor to make a gacha game based in the beloved universe. While it manages to bring all of the emotional story beats and memorable characters fans expect, it made me wish this was a full-fledged console experience due to its technical difficulties. <laughs> Tales of Crystoria places you in the shoes of Kanata, a bright-eyed young boy from a village who believes in the good of people and bringing justice to wrongdoers. Everyone born in the village is given a wisdom orb from birth. These orbs act as a sort of a police camera in form of communication to otherworldly beings known as enforcers. If someone commits a crime and enough people pray hard enough to these enforcers, they will appear and basically kill the new criminal without a fair trial. Kanata soon learns through his own actions that he shouldn't be so quick to judge others. However, this is only after he commits to a crime himself, and without proper context, he's immediately condemned to death by the enforcers. From there, he sets off on an adventure with what I felt is one of the stronger Tales cast of characters. This isn't a typical journey of let's go save the world since we're all the good guys kind of adventure either. It borders on the more anti-hero delivery, especially when the group is confronted with various trials. Thankfully, the Tales storytelling skits also make a return, which is always fun to help develop relationships between characters and provide great comic relief segments. Throughout the adventure, you'll occasionally run into characters from the Tales games who will join you as temporary party members when it pertains to the story or side missions. However, the inclusion of these characters is ruined by the game's lack of explanation as to why they are there in the first place. Most of the time, there would be some sort of reason they ended up in the universe, but here it's explained that they were just simply born in the world of Crystoria. It ends up hurting some of the more significant motivations these characters had, such as Velvet from Tales of Berseria and how she got her demon arm, or what happened to her brother. Lafayette. Gameplay includes a fairly standard JRPG turn-based system against a few familiar monsters from the series. Although you can pick your favorite Tales character from the series to receive a free SSR of that character, the gems needed to pull extra gacha characters are a little too much. You can play the game to receive gems, but you need 2,500 for a 10 pull, and that requires quite a bit of playtime since gems are required through the main story and achievements. If you want 2,500 right away, you'll have to pay $40. While most other gachas charge about 32 in comparison. Tales of Crystoria's campaign develops slower than what veterans of the series are probably used to, but this ends up working as a mobile experience. Each character has a basic attack, two arts, and a mystic art. After a few attacks, the mystic arc meter charges to unleash an attack familiar to what fans have seen in other entries of the series. Attack animations are insanely fun to watch, and the mystic arts have console quality visuals. Thankfully, there isn't too much of a barrier if you don't grind. Most battles throughout the campaign are easily approachable, which I appreciated since I didn't have to worry about equipment and other things to level up. Tales of Crystoria's item management revolves around proper materials to level up your characters, skills, and memory stones. These stones essentially act as your main accessory to boost your team's stats. There's also a sub stone menu where you can arrange stones of certain types to give an additional stat boost to your current team. There's also some PvP and PvE options with arena battles which end up being borderline pay to win along with raids, a guild function, that all end up creating a well-rounded JRPG experience for mobile devices. Sadly, all this is hurt by the game's technical issues that players have been experiencing since launch. Many of these issues hinder the overall gameplay experience itself. Things like chat functioning not working or a glitch that locks you in the tutorial, throw in some long load screens from menu to menu, and massive frame drops during battles even on powerful devices, and the game's positive experiences take a dive quickly. One strange feature are raids being automatically sped up to compensate for other players, which is fine, but I still suffer from choppy frame rates as my phone began to overheat. These issues and more have plagued the game since launch, which is why we delayed the review in hopes that they are fixed. This makes me wish that the game's postponed longer to ensure that the fans received the best version possible. Now it's as if you're still waiting since it desperately requires a patch. Thankfully, the load times seem to be improving. <laughs> Tales of Crystoria has a lot to offer fans with a great cast of characters and a plot that would stand proudly next to any of the series' entries. 
However, the technical issues will leave you stuck in a loading screen or trying to look past the constant frame drops during every battle. The whole experience made me wish that the game was just released on console because, as of right now, I don't find these unfair gotcha systems appealing enough to warrant sitting through this long barrier of entry. Noisy Pixels giving Tales of Crystoria a 6.5 out of 10. Thank you for watching. Please read the full review on NoisyPixel.net. NoisyPixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to deliver news, reviews, previews, and more. Please subscribe to keep up with all our future content.